Good afternoon YouTube viewers and subscribers. Today is a big day because I received the bearings in the mail for the Sato 170 R3 engine. Right now, this is what the engine looks like. I'm going to try not to get too much of my workbench in there because it's pretty messy at the time. Right now this engine is in pieces. Everything is cleaned up and it's basically just waiting for these bearings to come in. These are the bearings I've been waiting for. I'm going to replace the front one with the same type that was in there when I took it out, which was a rubber sealed bearing. And the back, the rear bearing was an uncaged open bearing like this. So right now, this is the status of the engine. The only thing I've really done, which I did somewhat this, uh, this morning before I went to work, was I went ahead and I installed the valves in each of the cylinder heads again <clears throat> just as a prelude to uh, the upcoming reassembly so all these parts are cleaned up ready to go so let's go ahead and just start installing some bearings in this crankcase connecting rods on uh, so, so that it'll be much easier. Now I've got this crankshaft here, crankcase, crankshaft bearings installed and I'm just going to set them in this jar just to give me an aid in fixturing. Now this is the number one cylinder so I want it facing upwards. Here's my crank main connecting rod I should say. This is the beveled end or the beveled side so I'm going to put some oil Okay, I think I've decided, well, one thing I haven't done yet is this little Teflon guide needs to go in the back of this connecting rod to kind of hold that in place. But what I think I've done here, what I've decided I'm going to do here is I think I'm going to set the timing now. And I'm hoping that I'm right in doing that. So let me get some oil on this for my gasket to sort of adhere to. So when you time a Sato engine, as I said earlier in one of the earlier videos, this engine is timed 132. And it's always going to be timed with it at top dead center. So Sato in their manuals always recommends using a tool. And each of these timing gears has a hole in it. So I've put the exhaust push rod, or I'm sorry, the exhaust cam follower in and I've left the intake one out. 
so that I can insert my screwdriver that has this point. And this screwdriver is just the right diameter to fit snugly in there. Now what I can do is I rotate this thing to a point where this screwdriver drops into that hole. And you can see that my timing dot, I hope you can see that my timing dot is at the 6 o'clock position. So, in theory, what I want to do here is I want to set this up here and not disturb my gasket. I want to set, set this, this here, here, hold this at top dead center while at the same time I've got this set in that hole. Now if I just set this on top just like that and run a screw down Okay, here's something I discovered off camera when I was jiggling around things. I discovered that I can't actually take this connecting rod assembly out of the engine while it's all intact. The only thing is I just got to remember I got to leave it like this because it represents one, two, three. So I'm going to leave it like that. So the method I was using to set the timing of this engine was correct. It's just that having that connecting rod in place was making this much more difficult to actually see where top dead center was than it should have been. So let's check this again now. Cylinder one. Okay, I'm engaged in the hole. And you can see the crank is at top dead center. Let's go to cylinder three. hold a little bit of pressure in there. Now this will rotate one and three quarters and it just dropped into place there. So this one looks like that's at top dead center but you know what I'm going to loosen this up just to make sure that I'm not off one tooth there because it looks like I could potentially be off one tooth Take this thing out of here, it'll make things easier. Okay. I'm still engaged there. Let me make sure this is now at top dead center. There, that's top dead center. Put this back on now. We're going to screw down. Now, we're at top dead center here. Let's go to cylinder number two. And it drops in right about there. So I dropped in there on cylinder two, and as you can see, it looks like I'm a tooth off. <clears throat> so let's do this one more time here. And this is, that little tooth being off thing is just enough that that connecting rod, having that connecting rod assembly on there was just throwing it off just a hair, my sight line. So taking that thing off, being able to take that thing off completely is obviously the best thing here. Now I'll be checking this timing again once I put the heads on, but this is just how I chose to do it initially here. So let me make sure I'm locked in place there. Let's go to top dead center, hold that, put this back in place. That looks good there. So i got some screws in here I need to put in, but for now, let's just check this. So I'm going to rotate this thing all around, get it all mixed up, go back to cylinder one, rotate it until that drops into place. It's in place, it just dropped into place, and you can see I'm at top dead center. 
without moving the crankshaft, going to cylinder number three, it should rotate about one and three quarters turns. One, three quarter. See, there's a little bit of play there, but I can feel that that's a top dead center. You can see it too. So that one's good. Let's go to cylinder number two. And that dropped into place right there. Since I've got two screws down, I'm confident that this is just a little bit of shimmy. It's not off a tooth. That's right there. This engine is timed properly right now. That much I'm pretty much confident in. So we can just tighten the rest of the screws down now.